Hello and welcome to Art Bites. It's a short encounters with a collection at the Mariana Kissler Beach Museum of Art. My name is Gabriella Randall and I am the summer 2024 intern here at the museum. And today I want to talk to you about Shirley Smith and her piece Burning Field. Shirley Smith was born in 1929 in Whitewater, Kansas. In her youth, Shirley spent her days on her family's farm caring for and admiring the many animals. Smith completed her education at Kansas State University, graduating in 1951 with a bachelor's degree in radio. During her time at K-State, Smith had a love for theater, acting in many plays, but since no theater major was offered, she settled for a degree in radio. After college, she got a job at KCMO, a local radio station in Kansas City, and while there, Smith started modeling for Hellsberg jewelry ads. After a year in Kansas City, she made her way to New York in 1952, when she was quickly signed to a modeling agency. She continued to model in many magazines and ads, and the most notable of which was the Maiden Form Bra. Now, with a steady income, Shirley was able to continue acting. After about 10 years of acting and modeling in New York, she started to lose some of her hearing, making it hard to hear her cues on stage. This signified to her a time for change. She started becoming more involved in the art world, taking local art classes when she wasn't acting. She met Conrad Marcarelli, a local abstract artist whose painting spoke to her. Thinking back on this encounter, Smith said, it, painting, clicked with me. It made sense. She made a true connection to art and knew from that moment on that that was how she wanted to spend the rest of her life. As swiftly as she could, Smith threw herself into her art. In the very beginning, she started cre by creating found object collages. She desired for her works to be both impressive stylistically as well as to draw the viewer in and invoke a sense of wonder. She continued with this abstract style for some time, even becoming a part of the lyrical abstraction movement in the late 70s. The piece in the top right corner is an example of her work in the lyrical abstraction style. After some time in New York, Smith found herself back in Whitewater, visiting her brother every summer for a few years until he passed in 1987. During one of these trips, she saw the work of Frederick Church in the Ulrich Museum in Wichita. When I left the museum that evening, the sky was especially beautiful, and taking it all in, I knew this is where and what I wanted to paint. Her connection to Whitewater never wavered, and the next step in her journey was calling her home. Smith continued to come home to Whitewater every summer after this, spending her time in a trailer on the farms of her closest friends, taking pictures of the landscape and any interesting details she found along the way. She would then take those pictures back to New York to use as references for her paintings. She would project the 35mm film back up onto the canvas to use as her guide, flipping back and forth between multiple photos. She would combine the landscape of one picture and the shape of another to create a whole new image, calling back to her roots as a collage artist. In these works here, uh, which are all a part of the Beach Museum's collection, something that really stands out is the loose and expressive brushwork, um, which are all deviations from her earlier work. Thinking back on her abstract pieces, they incorporated rigid geometric forms, but here it's the opposite. Each stroke is as loose and as free as nature. Her pieces are no longer at the same level of abstraction, but the influence is still there. We can easily tell what's going on, but Smith has taken her time to blur the lines of reality a bit, through her use of color. She was choosing to represent her home and her history, but all in the context of the life she had lived uh, since then. While her heart was in Whitewater, she still ha had all of these experiences and the knowledge acquired in New York that still had an influence on her style. Now, I wanna come back and talk about the focus piece today, Burning Field. I wanted to showcase this piece both because of its story and its look. The style is what we've been talking about, you know, before. Loose, pale, and a little outside of reality. And what I feel like we can all agree jumps out at us the most is the bright yellow flames in front of and behind the cow pasture. The bright yellow contrasts with the gloomy sky and desaturated field, and so it really does become the focus of the piece. It also tells an interesting story. A common and necessary job for farmers in the spring is to burn the fields in order to allow for new growth to take place. These burns take place in order to keep the natural grass healthy, which is a key part of the Kansas ecosystem. This painting tells um, a very interesting narrative and in a very striking way. These pieces, the, when the burns are typically represented, uh, they are usually out in an open field, but not here. In, the, in this painting, the burn is happening right next to a pasture that actively has cows in it. And that's a little scary. Um, our first instinct is to probably be worried for the cow. Is it any any real danger? The fire looks to be awfully close to the fence line, um, but is that usual? Is the fire getting out of control? Um, but and, and then what is our role as the viewer in this piece? Are we a passive viewer or are we the ones in charge of the burn? 
All of these questions race through our heads when we see this piece, and that's what Smith is hoping to achieve. She wants us to be a little confused so that we can start asking more questions so that eventually we can uncover the truth of the story being told. This piece was a way for Smith to bring the viewer back into her world. She is showing a common scene from her childhood, something familiar to her, but perhaps strange to everyone else. And as we take a final look at Burning Field, I want you to think about how differing perspectives can shape an image. How does the combining of different worldviews and lived experiences change the story and make it stronger? Thank you.